deity system. The deity system has got to be multi-dimensional. So we just didn't have one God all ought to be bowed down to. No, we had the 99 attributes of Allah that Muhammad knew about and, and Muhammad knew about and actually told the people to worship the Allah thing because Bilal was his motherfucking teacher that taught him all the shit he knew. And ain't no goddamn angel Gabriel came and whispered no shit in his ear that he didn't already know because his damn daddy was a Sufi Kushite right. <laughs> Muslim. Uh, at that particular time, a Sufi Kushite mystical person of Arabia. So now dealing with this particular thing we're talking about, we have to get into a form of nihilism, which means you have to go to a system of blasphemy to go against every structure that the American government and your thought of what you call religion has taught you. If it says one thing, you have to do the other because that's the way you get the melanin to work it. Because the rich religion we have had to bow down to, if you are the creator or you are the deity or you are the angelic most high beings, then the only way that you can understand to be the angelic most high beings is not to be worshiping the angelic most high beings, but to act as one of them. But every religion we've had is set against as far as the organized religion where you worship is set against you going back to your original nature. So therefore, what you have to do is everything that's out of order is what you need to go to. Because order stops chaos. You bring order to chaos. Well, we brought order to chaos for a certain reason a couple of million years ago. But this particular realm is gone now, so we must disorganize chaos, which you're good at anyway. <laughs> Disorganization. <laughs> CP time being one of them. When we get there, that's just the way it is. You see? So, Your deities or your energy can't evolve or you can't tap into your particular energy with the system or the way you have been trained to look at religion. You see what I'm saying? Oh, they used to worship many gods. No, they were only trying to define the one god which is melanin which is chaos, which is always moving. How can you define water? You just have to list every element in it so you can basically get a concept of what this particular thing is. You get where I'm coming from? And this is what we have to do at this particular time. We'll go back to that in a few minutes. I want to deal with some things in the Bible right now because in the Bible, that's going to be uh, Genesis 32, 30, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4, 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 25. So that's Genesis, chapter 32, verse 30, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 4, and 1 Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 25, which it says that Jacob wrestled with the angel, or Jacob was one of the only people who saw the face of God. The face of God is called Penuel, which is pineal. But in the Bible, it will be P-E-N-A-E-L. Penuel in the Bible. L means sun or star or the star head ones. Pen comes from the word penis. Penis. You have two penises. Both man and woman can't get to God now unless it's circumcised, but the woman 
don't suppose to have a certain penis down there, but the penis she does have down there is already circumcised. That's the clitoris. So she comes with the circumcised penis. The man has to circumcise his penis. The woman has a clitoris, which is a form of a clitoris of penis. But they're not talking about the lower level genitals. They're talking about the higher level genitals, genitals that both male and female have a penis, which is the pineal gland. And an uncircumcised penis is a calcified pineal gland. So you are born with a circumcised penis. So when they say a well, pineal gland comes from pine cone, no. The pine cone, the penis was before the pine cone. So when they named the pine cone, they named it because it looked like the head of the penis. So pine cone, a pine cone, is later, but first you have pen penis, a penuel. So penis, so what it, so so penuel. So the, what is the penis? The penis gives the seed, which is melanin. And in that seed is the cosmic substance that is the makeup of a star, stardust, which is star is L. Pine, P-U-L is the pineal, which is the star penis, or P-U-L, which is the seed. You get the word seed, you get the word star, all that's talking about melanin. Pineal, or pineal in the Bible, is called the face of God. So the face of God is in you, which you're supposed to be understanding, is not a God up there, but a God that is manifested down here, which is in your pineal gland, is the face of God. Go get the movie King David, 1985, with Richard Gere, where it said that only Moses and Jacob have seen the face of God. And his name was Pinuel, a Pineal. His name was Pineal. Right there in the King David, 1985. Then study the life of the King David, because there used to be a mythological part, and King David is actually Horus and a form of Osiris that they put in another version. You see what I'm saying? But David, in the movie, and in the mythos, slew Goliath, which is the giant, with a slingshot, but what really killed him? A pebble, right? The mystery is metaphysical. Goliath means in actuality the artificial realm that we're stuck in. And the, in, the, in the artificial government that oppress us. But you can't sl slay that government with a bullet because he got more bullets. Right. You can win the battle, but you can't win the war. But you can slay him with a pebble. Well, what is the pebble? The pebble is a stone. And the stone is called a philosopher's stone, or the stone that the builders rejected will become the cornerstone. And the philosopher's stone is nothing but the breakdown of melanin. Oh my God. So when Goliath slew David, Goliath was slain by, by um, David, by a stone, it was talking about David, the star of David, is two inverted pyramids, as above, so below. Which is the same as the eye of Hebrew, it's the same thing, if you understand the symbology. Which is the same as melanin, which is the star is in your head. The black dot is the star of David. But he slew him with a pebble. It's a metaphysical alchemical or alchemical term of the philosopher's stone, which is a stone that is not just a stone that, that is on the earth like any other stone you find, but this stone has an ter ter uh, extraterrestrial origin, which means it is made up of a composite that is not found Nowhere on earth, but only found in the black woman and black man. A composite of in the melanin. So it means that the melanin is made up of every composite on earth. But one composite that you can't find on earth is in the melanin. And in this case, it's a light particle. Which is in the stone which in actuality is a nuclear device that will blow up 
and kill everything on this realm that does not have the same energy of that which blows up. So it says in the Gospel of Thomas, heaven is like a mustard seed which is inside of you. And the plant that my and the plant that my father did not plant, or the weed that my father did not plant, cannot be plucked up. Which means, if you are not with the seed, if you are not from that seed of God, then sorry for you, cannot be plucked up. So it's talking about the seed is inside the melanin, which means that we are somewhere. That's not local from here. We're not local. We're somewhere, excuse me. We're somewhere in another universe and in another world. And we're about this being. But in this particular atom, or I atom, or I tune, or I ton, same thing, I ton, I tune. Adam, our seed, is a whole universe. Go back and see Men in Black. How many people saw the movie Men in Black? You got to see these movies. Especially here, it don't make no sense because you can go to the damn street and get the shit. <laughs> the mystery of the Men in Black, you got your keychain. In the Men in Black, the whole mystery to the movie was this. They said what? They said that the universe is, in, is on Orion. Matter saw that? And Orion was a cat. And they, everybody was looking for the universe, but it was in a little ball on the cat's neck. And when the woman looked into it, it was a whole universe. In a ball on the neck. That's Exactly what's inside of you. There's a little black dot that's smaller, it's housed in the melanin. The melanin is the triple blackness of space or carbon that's inside of you. But it's black, but in it is one little small seed about the size of a grain of salt. And in that seed is about the size of a grain of salt. Inside of that little seed is a whole other universe where the real you are because that is the real you. And what has happened is these two eyes have come in and is setting before the real you and magnifying this bullshit. And that's when they say we used to be gods and we used to be the entities until the giants came, which means now this illusion is magnified and it's blown shit up and you can't see the real you or the real world because of this shit he has taken the place and covering it up. The veil. But you are in a seed somewhere in another dimension and you are dreaming from this seed out into this particular dimension and now you stuck thinking that this shit here is reality when you over here. <laughs> But this particular seed is the most powerful thing in the universe. It's serious beat. That's your spirit. It's the most powerful thing in the universe. And it's an atom. And this atom, once activated, can blow up everything that is not of the same origin of this matter, of this atom. So therefore, that which is not in the same origin of you will have to be eliminated from this particular seed. That's the role of alchemy. We'll get back into that particular part. We just got to think, change the way of what we're dealing with at this particular time. The Ark of the Covenant. The Ethiopians built a physical chest that was in Ethiopia that they got from the mysteries of Osiris or Osa, or Asa, which is when Osiris was cut up or Osa was cut up into 14 pieces, 
But at first, and throw it into the catfish, throw it into the Nile, and the catfish ate the penis. You gotta go and read the mythology. Before that, when they first killed him, they shut him up in a chest and nailed the chest shut and threw the chest into the Nile. First of all, they invited him to the Last Supper. The original Last Supper was when they and had a party and they invited Osiris to the party, and then they killed him. And they also do it in some um, certain mythological um, Shakespearean plays, as well as some other things where they invite a person to a party and kill them. The mafia does it. The mafia does it. Give you the kiss of death. But anyway, in this particular chest, they shut up, they shut his body up in this particular chest. And it floated down the Nile. The ancient priest in Egypt, or Kemet, used to build this particular chest of Osiris. The Hebrews, because Moses was a defective priest from the priesthood of Osiris, or Osea. You can get the book, Moses, Pharaoh of Egypt, by Amid Osman. Amid Osman. You're gonna have to have, have it. It's, it's put out by, it's put out by um, Harper Collins Book Company, but they have a, like, they have also a international label. I can't think of the name of it, but it's Moses, Pharaoh of Egypt. Also get the Moses mystery. Uh, the Moses mystery. That's real popular right now. But he was a... The, I can't think of the guy's name. Um, uh, Moses mystery. But anyway, the chest. They used to build this chest in Kemet. The Hebrews learned how to build this chest. Now it's interesting because... The white boys followed the direction on how you build this so-called Ark of the Covenant in 1967. And they actually built one at the University of Chicago and it started thundering and lightning and shit and the United States Army rushed in and made them tear it down. But the key is, if anybody go and see the Raiders of the Lost Heart, the movie, Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg studies the occult. You will see the chest. Get it straight. You will see the chest. Let's say it's the chest. Which is the chest of Osiris, which is the same Ark of the Covenant. And on the chest, you will see two angels with. Let's see if we can get this right. Two angels with their, with their wings on the chest. Anybody saw this movie? Uh, anybody see the Ark of the Covenant? Yes. These two wings are the wings of Mayat. You ever see the goddess Mayat? Or Ma'at? And you see the two wings? These are the wings also of Ma'at. They're showing that this particular chest came out of Egypt, or Kemet. But it also means this. The power that is in this particular chest is also in you because the wings of my heart also appears on the staff of Tahuti. It's the same wings of my heart on the staff of Tahuti. But in the middle of the staff of Tahuti is the black guy, right. which is melanin. So this particular chest equals this particular black guy. This is the true ark of the covenant, which has the power to God, of, of the power of God, and as long as the Hebrews, along with the Egyptians or the, the chosen people, had the Ark of the Covenant, they were invincible. But the reason why we're not invincible is because we suppress this melanin. But as long as you utilize the melanin and you utilize it through thought, we'll get into that in a few minutes, you are invisible. Invincible, excuse me. Invincible. So the Ark of the covenant, art is also an ARK. Our art is also a ship. A ship. Or, if you turn it upside down, a vessel. The white boys talk about spaceships, but you got the original ship, which is the black guy, that's you. That's what the ship is. And some of the things you see in the spaceships is actually us as entities that can take on any form. So this is also called the Ark too. So the Ark of the Covenant is also the black dot. 
is what it's actually dealing with at this particular time. So now, dealing with some other mysteries, we got a, we got a lot to cover. It took them 500 years to produce and put together the complete story of Jesus. It says that people, what people know about Jesus is different than what is the really scholarly view about Jesus. The entire Bible has less than 2% of the teachings on Jesus, period. So that means, in actuality, you know that the book was borrowed from somebody else. When half the book is less than 2% on the whole teachings of Jesus, but yet the Christian is all in love with Jesus because he don't understand the science behind it. You, the, the, the science behind it. Now, dealing with other, we're dealing with symbology here tonight before we go into the other part. This is real crucial that you understand this in the Egyptian symbology. Try to understand this. It's another in Egypt, or in Kemet, you have three pyramids. <clears throat> three pyramids. Also represent the three stars in Orion's belt. The silver star in Orion's belt is Sirius. in Orion's belt, also representing three planets. The three planets is Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Or, yeah, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Also represents Aset Isis, Horus, Heru, and Osa, Osiris. So for the Greek translation, it would be Isis, Osiris, and Horus, the first trinity. So, this is Heru, Horus, in the middle pillar. This is Isis, or Aset, we just put Isis, or Aset, we just put Aset, let's put Heru, Aset, and Osa, Asa, you are or sir, or you are, or saw, which is, and it also represents the mystery, how does this break down with us? The mystery of this is, I said Isis represents the pituitary gland, Osiris represents the hypothalamus gland, or region, and Heru, which is light, represents the pineal gland in the brain. And between the conjunction of these three, you get the illumination of the middle pyramid with the capstone in the middle of the middle, middle pyramid, which is Heru, which is both Aset and Osar, or Osiris and Isis combined into one, their offspring, which is in you. In the Christian symbology, this would be transferred to one cross on Calvary, two crosses on Calvary, three damn crosses on Calvary. Oh, That's what this shit is. The three crosses on Calvary represent the three pyramids that you have visually. So you can't find no damn crosses nowhere in the motherfucking Middle East. The only thing you can find is a goddamn pyramid. And from this pineal gland, the third pineal gland, you also have Mars, which is Horus. Saturn, which is the black planet, which is Iset, which is Isis, and Jupiter, which is the light bringer, which is Osiris. Gives reign to the god Mars, which is the god of war. But the mystery to all of this is the three stars on Calvary, the three pyramids, the three planets, and the three stars on Orion belt give rise to one thing. In front of the Egyptian Pyramids, you have the Sphinx, which is Horus on the horizon, which is the true Christ of the world, because we got evidence of this goddamn Christ, and we ain't got no evidence of the other shit that was stolen from it. Which is your symbol 
which is a symbol of melanin, which is in you, which makes you the Christ. But the cavalry and the three stars is the same thing. Which also in the Kabbalistic, in the Kabbalistic, you got the Kabbalah, at the top of the spear of the Kabbalah, you got down three spears. At the bottom at the Kabbalah, but the top one is the three spears. Which is Kabbalah, which is Horus, which is Vina, which is Isis, which is Saturn. And then you have the, then you have the universe here, wisdom, Hakma, or Shakma, which is actually Osiris, wisdom of Osiris, or Osa. These are the mysteries of what they're actually dealing with at this particular time that you must understand. But in the movie, The Million Black, they showed this little ball around the cat's neck. And they said that the universe was on Orion. Well, the universe is on Orion because that's the doggone stereo serious star system, which is a binary star. You got Sirius A, which is the brightest star in the sky. Now everything out there ain't nothing but a hologram of what's going on down here. You just don't understand that. Everything that's going on down here is a hologram. Up there that you see is a hologram of what's actually happening down here. So you got the brightest star in the sky, which is Sirius, which is Greek for Osiris, but Sirius also. It's also Isis, it's also Aset, it's also Anubis. And what it means is all the gods come from Sirius, which is another dimension other than getting in a spaceship traveling here. You must understand. We'll get into, when we get into question and answer, we can entertain a lot of these things. So bring them back up in question and answer. But the key is, you have Sirius, which is the brightest star in the sky. Then you have Sirius B, which is the smallest thing in the universe which travels around Sirius A every 50 years. In actuality, there is only Sirius B. Sirius A is the brightest star, is the illumination of Sirius B. Just like you have a black dot on the inside of you, and when it illuminates, you have a crown chakra. So Sirius B is only a, Sirius A is only a reflection of Sirius B. So in the movie, they said the universe was on Orion, on Orion's belt, Sirius. Because everything is in this particular dimension is serious. Because the whole astronomical thing that you learn in, 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 in school has nothing to do with how the real universe works. The real universe is called a magical universe, and that's only a hologram. And the white boy tried to explain that based on space and time. There's no such thing as space and time. You'll understand that in a few minutes when I get into the time thing. But the key is, they said the universe was on Orion's belt. And then, the, the, then uh, 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 Tommy Lee Jones had to go shake down this little dog to find out what the fuck was going on. And the little dog was an was a alien. He said, the universe is on the rise belt. He said, what does that mean? So what? What does that mean? He said, you, you earthlings, you think that everything that's important has to come in a big size. It's got to be big. The big ain't nothing but a hologram. That's a manifestation or an emanation of something that is smaller or something that is unseen is so small, which is the unseen real, which is the real shit. White man put out a book called The Black Goddess and the Unseen Real. Stayed out about two years and ain't been out since, in 1988. The Black Goddess and the Unseen Real by Peter Redgrave. Came out about a year, went the first one, they took it off the market. Because he says up in there that the black man and black woman observe nature. And then they can learn from it because the nature was put here or anyone that created it. So, But the energy that's put in the nature is there for them to learn how to rule nature or how to coexist with nature. The white man has to dissect and cut up because he don't understand shit always cutting up. Instead of just looking at the damn movements, you can find out all the shit you need to know. And, it, and it's talking about the black, the unseen real, he was talking about the triple blackness of space, which is actually a feminine element. It's the material of the womb of the universe. Now going back to this, he said, you little fool, you think that everything got to be on a big size. And the guy, so Tommy Lee Jones say, so what? Okay, I agree. What the big, what's the big deal about this little shit around the cat neck? He said, you don't understand. 
He said that little ball around the cat neck, which represents the little black dot inside of you, is the greatest type of subatomic energy. Which means that the greatest type of subatomic energy is fucking melanin, and you walking around with the goddamn shit. <laughs> you can blow this whole thing up, but you don't know what the fuck to do. Because you think that the physical body is you, and it ain't got shit to do with you. You see what I'm saying? Go and study the movie. He was talking about the little thing around the neck on Orion's belt on the cat's neck was the black dot in the CMU. But in the movie, he turned around and he said, I've been in the business for a long time, kid. I'm turning it over to you. And he turned it over to Will Smith as to say, we getting the fuck out of this shit. We gonna let the black man have back the planet because we don't know what the fuck to do. You think I'm lying, they did the Spawn movie. The guy who was supposed to have kept the evil forces from coming in, out the, 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 for, from ruling or uh, really taking the earth, he said, for 400 years, he said, I'm giving it up. This is all for you. And gave it to the black man. They, gave it, they relinquished the rights and gave it to the black man twice. See what I'm saying? Twice. How many people saw Event Horizon? Mm -hmm. Event Horizon with Larry Fish Brown. Listen, this is the key. Any movie that come out science fiction, the white boy is giving up all the keys in the shit. You got to go and see it. You can't sleep on it because the shit is not going to come all the time in a book. As a matter of fact, a lot of the shit in the book he is, is stopped printing if you didn't get them yet. So therefore, it's going to come in the movies. What the fuck is movies? Movies is mythology. What is mythology? Mythology is physics and science. So they understand that they can put it right in the movie and be just as authentic as putting it in a research book. You got to understand how real scholarship works. It's not based on this version of what they told you in school. You got your PhD for writing some paper on some bullshit. <laughs> in Event Horizon, they had this machine that created an artificial black hole. And what is the black hole? The black dot inside of you. What happened on the movie? The white boy got sucked into the black hole, and when he was spitting back out, what did he say? I can't take the blackness. I can't take the blackness. And it ran him crazy because he didn't have a melanin because he was a mutant. He couldn't take the blackness. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand what's actually going on and how this whole thing is shaping up at this particular time. So let's go into some other mysteries at this particular time so you can understand something. Now, now Henry Cubanardo came and he told you all about the hail block thing last year, or this year, the whole nine yards, so he's covered that. But the hail block thing was one key in the mystery of the comet that was supposed to come, because in the Zohar, which is the written Kabbalah, they talk about this comet that was coming in the last days. In the in the in the in the uh, uh, Celtic mystery, which is your your mysteries of Excalibur and the Arthurian mysteries, they talk about the last days when what will come is a dragon's tail. The dragon's tail, which is the comet. But when the comet comes, it says after the comet comes, the comet will come and will get in a fight with a star or a flame or a star. It's the mystery of the flame and the star. The flame is the comet, which also represents your kundalini. Because everything that's going on in the heavens is going on in your body. Look, we have passed the comet stage. We are in the other realm at this particular time because the comet is coming and going. But it's different. Outside, it acts as a sign. Inwardly, it's a combination of your spirit illuminating. The flame is the kundalini inside of you that you've seen on the staff of Tahuti. You've seen the staff of Tahuti Medical Association for the people that see it. That's the Medical Association. You've seen the staff of Tahuti. You've seen the flame. The flame is the energy inside of you which is a cosmic fire that shoots up your spine. So when you saw that comet, that was a reflection of something that's going on on the inside of you which is the Kundalini energy rising. That's 
might have had to start killing you off. The star that was supposed to get in a fight with this flame is the star, is the black dot that is illuminating us. That's the star. But if you notice, this particular symbol is also a symbol of the double helical structure of the DNA. All right. You see, it's what it is, the double helical structure of the DNA. So the star and the flame that they're actually talking about is, in actuality, what has also happened in the Hellbot mystery. Now, how do we know this is true? Because there's an Etruscan man. The Etruscans are the original people that started Greece and Rome, that the Indo-Europeans came down and took the society like the damn did with the Native Americans and plagiarized all the shit and said that it was their language. When the Etruscans and the motherfuckers taught them how to speak, because Count Borne said that we even had to teach them how to speak. And the Etruscans is nothing but another form of the Phoenicians, the seafarers. And these are the people that started Greeks and Rome. You see what I'm saying? Also in that paper that I gave you, that document, they say that they are mumbling, which means that they can't even talk. They're always grumbling, which is talking about they can't even talk, the white man. So, at the funeral of, was it the funeral of um, Julius Caesar? There was, a, there was all rejoicing because there was a comet that came in Rome at the time of the death of Julius Caesar. And they had already had a prophecy of when the comet come, the end of the world was coming. But any time the end of the world came in the ancient time, or the thought of the end of, end of the world coming in the ancient time was a great rejoicing period, that means that you don't have to do no more time on planet Earth in this jail cell or this prison camp. And you'll be released back into the gods that you used to be, or the deities or the energy force that you used to be. Go get the movie Dark Crystal, and you'll see all the shit I'm talking about. They put it in one fucking movie, The Dark Crystal. That's if you don't own shit. You need to go down to the damn child section in damn Blockbuster and buy the damn Dark Crystal or wherever the hell you go. They get, they, they sell, wherever they sell videos and buy that. Because everything, they, they, the crackers worked on that shit for five years. So they ain't working on no child movie for five years. They just put it that way so it can fool most of the people that don't know what time it is, the Dark Crystal. All the shit I'm talking about is explained in the Dark Crystal. But anyway, they were rejoicing back in Rome during the death of Julius Caesar because there was a comet in the dog overhead at the same time. But the Etruscan man, which was the original people of Rome, stood up and said, no, that is not the comet. He said, there's going to be a comet going to come in the end days. It's going to be the one that will be the end. But that won't be the one. And he was talking about the comet that just came. And he said, to let you know that I'm not, tell, I'm, I'm, I'm not lying, I'm going to do something right now to prove to all of you all that I'm telling the truth. And he fell out and died. <laughs> fell out and died. This black man. Doing the devil. And it's, and it's recorded in a book called Ancient Greece, Greek and Rome, Ancient Greek and Roman Religion. Two volume book. Ancient Greek and Roman Religion. You can get that book. At, see, Barnes and Nobles has these sale books. They got their own printing press company, so they can print a lot of this shit and sell it for like six dollars. And they got these hardbound sale books, and they got and, and that's one of them. But if you go there, they can order it. Right, they, they got a shipping yard, and they can order that shit. They got another one called the Wisdom of the Wisdom of the Wisdom of Ancient Egypt. It's a, it's a book, if you go there, you can see it in their sales section. It's the wisdom, of, the wisdom of Ancient Egypt. And in there, they got the papyrus in that book on the contendings of Horus and Set. And that's the, the fight between the good forces and the evil force, which is in that particular book, as well as ancient Egyptian literature by Faulkner. Ancient Egyptian literature by Faulkner has that fight between Horus and Set, the complete version as well as Ancient Egyptian Literature by Miriam Litchum, Volume 2, has that fight. And if you can't find those, you can get From Fetish to God in Ancient Egypt by E. Wallace Budge that has that chapter of the fight. But if you read it from ancient texts, you need to get as many different versions of the ancient texts that you can get because we're dealing with white people who have problems translating shit. 
So you need to get in a mini version and you need to tell your higher self what the fuck is the real truth. You see what I'm saying? What, what, what is the real truth and all? So let's go on. Let's go on. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Yeah, a little over an hour. Huh? A little over an hour. A little over an hour. Okay. At this particular time, all black people have melanin. The ones that are still living, that the government ain't killed. But all black people ain't conscious. What makes you different than those particular ones? It's simple. It's simple. They all have melanin, they all have the black dot, but they do not all have an advanced heart chakra. When you, the advanced beings, came back down to reincarnate, to be the ones to get us out of this mess, your heart chakra became open. Which means, the old saying, his heart wasn't in it. Which means you gotta be real. Your heart wasn't in it. So what we mean by that is your heart chakra, it, everybody, everyone has melody, but all black people we see, every brother ain't a brother. You heard that before. Yes. The problem is, is their heart chakra is not open. Here's your chakra system, you know, in your body. Hold on, let me get In your body, your chakra system, but the heart chakra has to be illuminated for you to obtain this particular knowledge. And what this means is this. You have the root chakra, the navel chakra, the, the spleen chakra, there's one, and you have the solar plexus. But you, then you have the heart chakra. If they're not radiating, if the energy on the kundalini is not radiating above the heart chakra, that means that their consciousness is down in the root chakra. So no matter how much you try to teach them this knowledge, the consciousness comes straight down here and it bounces off. They can't get it down here at the root chakra. The only way you'll be able to receive knowledge that it makes you want to understand more is your heart chakra has to be radiating before you can get to the, the throat chakra, the brow chakra, and the crown chakra. It has to be illuminated at the heart chakra. So your heart has to be in it. So that's what it means don't cast pearls to swine because most of the people are illuminating on the lower chakra, which is ruled by the lower ego. And in order for you to get What's really coming to you, you got to be illuminated on the heart chakra. On, on the actual heart chakra. And this is what's actually going on at this particular time. Now let me deal with some things right now because we also know that the government went to Mars this summer with the probe. Uh, we need to ask this question. Why the hell would they send a damn probe to Mars and don't land where the face of Mars is? which they took pictures since 1976. And why is it that shit died out after a couple of rocks? About two or three weeks they showed rocks and that's it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's it. We need to ask that particular question on what actually went on. Amalaj Muhammad said that there used to be black people on Mars, but guess who they used to worship? The motherfuckers down here. They used to worship us. Because they understood that those particular ones that was in the other star systems, not the star systems from way beyond, but our solar system, Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, and all of those. Those particular entities used to worship us because they understood that the whole universe had to be redeemed from the lowest planet. And our planet would be the last planet, which in actuality is the first planet. So they used to worship us not because we were the lowest planet, it's because we were the planet on the mountaintop. See, the hologram has got you looking out in space, which is actually down, and the Earth is actually up. So when you look in the Earth, you're looking at the highest point of the doggone heavens. So Osiris, Osiris being up under the ground, which is actually inside of your mind, is the highest part of the heavens, so we are actually up and the other shit is down and they're waiting on us. So when the people on Mars used to worship us and they built a big monument to it, 
to Horus or Heru that was on earth. And they used to worship us because we were the sleeping gods. So they used to worship us. Very key you should understand that at this particular time. Now, let's get into a couple of things. Uh, let's, let's get into a couple of things of what we're going to get into at this particular time. And I want to uh, explain this to you. All right. Um, the words, the 144 negative confessions. I want to deal with this right now. 144 negative confessions, which is in the book of the day, or the book of coming forth by day, which Moses took 10 of those 144 negative confessions. And made the Ten Commandments from. Now, we don't deal on moralism. That ain't got shit to do with the immortals, which we are. Damn, who the hell is this? <laughs> Some fools out there. And you know what? That might be energy. Because when I talk, and when other people talk, you always get some shit disturbing things. You'd be surprised. It might be some other type shit out there. They're more than somebody blowing a horn. The 144 negative confessions is the word negative means it ain't got shit to do with your physical body. Now let me explain this on what I'm talking about here. We don't deal with moralism because we deal with instinct. We just are. Now, what I mean by that is this, and when we go into a question and answer, which we're going to do so we can get the ball rolling because I want to get some things. I want to explain something to you here. When we first looked at this, the first Afrocentric scholars first looked at the 144 negative confessions. They thought that when the initiate used to have to uh, recite this every time, they were saying that you physically didn't I did not kill nobody. I did not go in the man. I did not do this. I did not do that. Which, um, which in, 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 they changed to I, I shall not in the Bible or whatever, or in the Torah. The key is, is this. The 144 negative confessions was not meant for you to follow. Because this is an illusion and you don't even exist on this realm. You never did. This is only a dream. The 144 negative confessions of I have not done this, I have not done that, ain't got shit to do with you physically. This is what your soul has not done because your soul is pure. And your soul has not done this. Because hell, if it was left up to your physical body, we would fail 100. We got 144 of these motherfuckers to do with all the impurities and all of the doggone passions we got down here, there's, you'd be humanly impossible. The only way you was able to do that shit is you'd have to be dead. <laughs> so it's not talking about, now let me show you what I'm talking about. It's not talking about what you didn't do as far as your behavior. It's talking about your soul is pure and it's been pure and it's on the inside of you. So therefore, because your soul being pure, you don't have to go around here doing no good behavior shit. And in this case, because we don't behave good, that's mercy on our ass. This means that your soul has not done these particular things. So the Book of the Dead is not talking about what a person is supposed to read and take a moral code and a moral law and live his life by. It's saying, while you in this hell, this is what your soul is going through on the inside of you. That's the moralism. When they say the nature of the black man or black woman is that of God or that which is righteous. You see what I'm saying? Which is talking about your soul and it has nothing to do with the way you behave on the outside. Now, does this mean that you're just supposed to go out and kill people? In our rightful habitat, by us having a soul, Going out and doing the shit we do now is not our nature anyway. We wouldn't do that shit anyway. Because it's not our nature. Just like a damn cat wouldn't jump in the damn ocean and swim. He would have to be taught that shit. You get it? So the key on what I'm saying is on all this biblical myth and stuff, and all of the holy books that you think, it's not on how you behave on this realm. It's how your soul behaves in another realm because your soul is the essence of the 
Most High. You get it? It is the essence of the Most High. It has nothing to do with you on this particular realm. Now, so in that case, then what is it that we need to do? What is it that we need to do? The key is, the first thing that we need to do is I want to read something to you. First of all, let me read this to you. This is called Gnosis in Time. It's a book called Man and Time. The paper's from the Erno Shield books. Now this is coming from Princeton University. Now to show you, to jump on the whiteboard, all this metaphysical shit, the Ivy League and them put out these yearbooks. The last yearbook was 1957. So that means they had all this knowledge and had already synthesized it before you even went into a whole civil rights movement. So all the shit that we did in the 60s was a damn government strategy and they was laughing at the whole shit anyway because they already knew the damn truth and knew their faith and acted upon it. That lets you know how advanced they are as far as what time we're dealing with. Now I want to show you this. I want to read this to you. And it's dealing with time. Because in actuality, time is an illusion, just like I told you. When you put time to something, that's why you can't deal with time as Africans or as black people. Because I want to say this right now. First of all, we need to get out of this whole African shit. Let me deal with this. There is a goal and there is a movement amongst white people to get you to stop calling yourself niggas. Because the word nigga is a very sacred and powerful word. The word nigga comes from alchemy and it means Saul, which equals, which means son, nigger. <laughs> which means the blackening stage which means the blackening stage. Saul nigger, it's an alchemical term. You can get it in a book called, there's a little book by the woman she wrote, The Book of Lilith, her name is something cold too. Barbara Black Cold Too. Don't ask me how to spell this black glass shit. Barbara Black Cold Too. She wrote the Lilith book and she got another book out called Solomon and Sheba. Saul, which is son. Amen. Which is the hidden son. Which is the same as Amen Ra. Ra is son, Amen, which means hidden son, which means the black dot. Saul, which is son. Amon, Solomon, which is the hidden son. So Solomon is Amen Ra or Osiris or Osea. Osea in his illuminated form is Amen Ra. Sheba, the queen of Ethiopia, is like Shekinah, Maya, Sophia, or Aset, Isis. It's a mythological story that got out of hand and somebody made it try to make it historical. But in there, they talk about alchemy, and in that little book they got the stuff in there called one of the part of the blackening stage which makes melanin black is called Saul Nigger, the black sun. The black sun. So, when you say the word nigga, because if you look up the word throughout African history and around the world, they got that word nigger, nigger, or they got something like this on different than nigger. This was an ancient word. But when you say this word nigga, that means black, or it means the black sun, you bring on power. And it's power and words of power that can kill. So even though we thought that we started calling each other niggas based on something we heard the white boy, we just re repeated. The reason why we call ourselves that's the spiritual part. So first of all, I had to get you to stop calling yourself black and get yourself to stop calling yourself niggas. A black nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a physical shit. We can back it up. We can back this shit up. You challenge me on this motherfucker. It's an alchemical term, which is melanin. So, get you to stop calling yourself black, which is power, and nigger, which means black, which is power, the black sun. Saul nigger, or Amon Ra. To call yourself an African American, which is a non-existent motherfucking entity. America don't exist, because this is not America. Which is a white man, 
Or as a double white man think of Africa, that's the damn Roman white boy too. Leo Africanus. So it's the reason why they do shit this way. Okay. What's that? Change my tape. Change your tape. Okay. Then we, we got to go into this. Okay. 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 Let me change it yeah. real quick. Real quick. Yeah. And while I'm changing, can she tell you what's getting ready to go down? Right. Okay. Uh, excuse me. I hate to put a break in this, but this is very important. This Monday, November the.